hold your Bible high over your head and repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. And I believe that there is power in the Word of God. I'm about to receive the seed of the Word of God. And the devil will not steal my seed. But I will prosper from what I receive today. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know what to do if you mean it. You know what to do if you mean it. Should nobody have to pump a prime to worship and praise the one that woke you up this morning. If you're a first time visitor, real quick, first time visitor in world life, we stand to your feet. We just want to give you something. First time ever in this house. Amen. We're going to share something with you. We're going to give us one of our welcome packages. Inside that package, you're going to find a little magazine that tells you all about our church and our ministry. There's also a little CD in here called The Year of the Lord's Release. Oh, my God. There's a, a little booklet in there called Why Tongues. It's going to give you 10 reasons why every believer should be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Then there's a little card in there. I want you to fill this card out, put it in the offering receptacle at offering time so we can put you on the mailing list and keep you abreast on all the great things going on here at the Word of Life Community Church. Come on, give our guests a hand. God bless y'all. You may be seated in this brother. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Look at somebody tell me, you look marvelous. So glad to see you. Amen. Now, as I remind you always, whenever, whenever the season shifts, you have to shift. People start out real good at the first of the year, making my attendance, doing what I'm supposed to do, making my spiritual commitments to God. And then in our section of town, in our region of the United States, they have this thing called Mighty Grow. And so what the devil does, he throw out a big old net and he just pulls on everybody that made a commitment to make sure you don't try to keep that commitment for the rest of the year. Tell them, say, don't let this season take you out of the place God's bringing you into. Oh, y'all ought to praise him right there. All right, somebody said, now how can he say that real quickly? But now y'all know we're talking about the t priesthood of Jesus, but real quickly, go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter number 11 at verse 6. Friend, when you find it, say amen. Oh, I want to show you something. Ready? Read. Hold on. Everybody not reading? Come on. Wake up. Be where you are. Look at somebody tell them, always be where you are. All right. Everybody ready? How does faith come? Why? How does faith come? So we know this is not a reading drill. I'm not asking you to read because I want to hear how good you can read or uh, if you can't read. I'm trying to build faith. And faith can only come one way deep. That's by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Aren't y'all got me too hot back here? So that's why in here we read the word out loud. You'll have me saying, repeat this, say this, say that. Because the Bible says, by your words are you snared, or by your words are you justified. See, so before you came here, you talked your way into a whole lot of stuff. I'm trying to talk you out of that, get you to talk your way out of some of that stuff right now. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Look at somebody and say, the power of life and death is in your tongue. Oh, man, I don't want to change up to that, but you know God won't do what you say. Yeah, but read this verse for me. I'm going to show you something about your relationship. Ready? Read. But for our faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. All right, highlight that word for me, diligent, right there. See, because in the Greek, that word diligent is translated into consistently. So years ago, I, I taught a message called consistency is the key to your breakthrough. See, so whatever you do consistently will create some type of results. 
You keep doing negative stuff consistently, you're going to get negative results. You start doing positive stuff consistently, you're going to get positive results. So we've been teaching on understanding the priesthood of Jesus. Uh, we've come a long way talking about this. there were seven, eight covenants actually that God would have to use the term cut or made with mankind. So we went all the way all through all these seven and now we're down on this eight covenant. In the eight covenant, the Bible calls a new and a better covenant simply because all the previous covenants, man couldn't keep them. So we did two or three things real quickly that I already laid out. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. First thing I told you was that we were chosen before the foundation of the world. We were chosen before the foundation of the world. Real quickly for the sake of time, go to Ephesians chapter 1 at verse 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. We were chosen. See, see, you didn't find God. God was never lost. Everybody say this, omnipresent. One more time, omnipresent. That simply means everywhere at the same time. So God is ever present. God was not the one that was lost. We were. I can't lose something that's everywhere I go. David said it like this in one place. If I make my bed in hell, he said, lo, God is there. Now, why would God be in hell to deliver you? David said it like this. He took me out of a miry clay and put my feet on a rock to stay. Yes, I tell people all the time, God will meet you where you are. You won't come to church, he'll come to the club and find you. Oh, he found me one night in the club. Amen. I told you, I told you his testimony. Man sitting next to me, had on the same shirt, same pants. He blew my mind. So God, say that with me, God will meet you where you are. You could be in the hospital. You don't have to go to jail for God to meet you. But he'll let you go to jail so he can meet you. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't listening to me. God don't put sickness on you. Sickness is of the devil. But sickness will come and you'll start calling on God. How many times have you ever been around some atheists? Folk talking about they don't believe God. Something happened real quick. First thing, oh, Lord. Oh, they went to believing then. Oh, ain't nobody in here. I said they went to believe in them. What you say, class up? Say amen. 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 That's my little brother there. His dad was my first pastor. He just came here trying to surprise me. I don't nothing surprise the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So now, here we go. Where, where I tell you to go? Ephesians 1, verse 4. Y'all quit messing with me. We're going to get on out of here. All right, ready? Read. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So I was chosen. Say that with me. I was chosen by God before the foundation of the world. Now watch this, mother, watch this. Not only did he choose me, but he, wa- he made a way out of, for me before the foundation of the world. Go to Revelations 13, verse 8. Revelations 13, verse 8. Two, two, two. These, man, these things here are so prominent, so strong. Oh, God, to, to once you get this revelation, you, you ought to get increase in your walk with God. Y'all got it? Re- Revelations 13, verse 8. Ready? Read. Mm-hmm. Slain from the foundation of the world. Now, look up. If you were here last week, I gave you an illustration. Go to Genesis right now, Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to show you before the foundation of the world. I I don't know you there. You know, I'm not sitting there with you. I got to hear, you know, I'm response oriented. Sometimes I'm talking to people on the phone. They get quiet, talking about I'm just listening. I need to know you there. What's on your mind? Talk to me. Y'all got my scripture? All right, read it. Let's read it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, stop. In the beginning, in the beginning. So before the foundation of the world, world is before verse 1, 2, and 3. Uh-huh. Wow. See, before God even opened his mouth, that's, 
Everybody, ah, oh, that's rich. Holy Ghost said, do it like this. Show you this. Go to 1 Corinthians. Hold your finger here. We're coming back. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, around verse 14. Say this while you're going up. First spirit, then natural. One more time. First spirit, then natural. Now, I'm going here to the first chapter of Corinthians, chapter 14, around verses 14 and 15. Uh, when you get there, put it on my board so I can see, please, Junior. And, and see, so when you get there, I'm, 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 I'm going to show you how, 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 how important it is and how the spirit realm is the first realm. But we spend, oh, a whole lot of time developing our natural man. Matter of fact, scriptures say bodily exercise is profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all. So that means the more I develop my spirit, man, the, the more natural manifestation I'm going to have. Because God said when Jesus was talking, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not really New Testament scripture. Why? Because Jesus was still walking that out. So when Jesus was doing all that talking, he told them, <laughs> that, that what you do in secret, I will reward you. Now, when the Bible talks about your spirit, uh, when the Bible speaks of your heart, it's talking about your spirit, man. When the Bible speaks of your mind or your soul, it's talking about your mind. In the confines of your solical existence or your mind, uh, or your mind, your emotions, your free will, your intellect, your reasoning capabilities are all comprised in the mind. So when the scripture starts talking about your soul, then it shifts from the mental capacity to your entire being. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you as a being. So, but when it talks about our heart, like it talks about in one place, it was talking about let the woman's uh, I would apparel be of the hidden man of the heart. Now, I'm using the hidden man of the heart piece of that scripture because I'm not necessarily talking about how women dress, but the hidden man of the heart because he was talking about her spirit. And it said, let it be of a meek and a lowly spirit. So, so to identify what I'm saying here is whenever that scripture starts talking about a heart of man, he's talking about his spirit. And it's imperative that I develop spiritually because when God speaks to me, he speaks to me spirit to spirit. See, I'm too busy trying to hear God in my flesh. That's why a lot of my efforts and a lot of the manifestation that comes forth in my life are always fleshly. And give you a minute, let that soak on you. See, because he says he that sows to the flesh or operates in the flesh will of the flesh reap. Galatians said, be not deceived. God is not whatsoever man soweth. So if God said, if I spend time in the spirit, he's going to reward me in the open. So it's first spirit. Come on, say that. First spirit. The unnatural. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you how important it is to develop your spirit when we get down here in this. Yeah, go up one more verse. Verse 13. No, that's good. 14. Ready? Let's read 14 and 15. Ready? Read. So stop. Now, when you when folks that want to receive the Holy Ghost, to hear it is real clear, concise. You can't hardly get any clearer than that. You're not supposed to understand what you're saying. And I know that's hard for most people because we, we control oriented. See, but spiritual things are in the realm where God is. And as long as I'm lining up and obeying the word and operating according to the word, I got to get God results. So now watch, by the time we shift and go to the next verse, he's going to lay that thing out for you. Ready? Read. What is it then? What is it then? Question. So now he's questioning us as believers. Keep reading. You're going to do what? You're going to do what? You're going to do what? So notice the priority. He starts talking about praying with the spirit first. Because it is spirit first, Mooney. Then natural. There's always going to be two, two realms of manifestation in our lives. There are going to be things that are spiritual and things that are just natural. But not all things can be governed, glory to God, man, can go be governed by the spirit. See, the less my spirit, man, is developed, 
Jermaine, the, the more my flesh has control over me. The more I develop my spirit, man, the more I can bring my flesh under subjection. Why? Because there's something greater in control of this natural. See, see, for the most part, man has been operating as a dichotomy, soul and flesh. When you are really a triune being, you are spirit, soul, and flesh. Go to First Thessalonians. Hold your finger here. We're coming right back. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to hear that because we're coming right back over here because everybody say spirit first, then natural. Spirit first, then natural. All right, you got it? First Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Ready? Read. God of peace, sanctify you, and I pray God your whole soul. Wow. So you see here that you, you're comprised, you're made, created just like God. So when the Bible says man became a living soul, the ruah of God, the pruma of God, which is Greek and Hebrew for the breath of God, is what makes us God-like. Hold your finger there. Glory to God. John chapter 4, 23 and 24. Everybody, why are you going there? Say, God is a spirit. You got it? John 4, 23 and 24. All right, everybody, read it. Let's read. Next verse. Go up to the verse 22 then. Yeah, I'm at 24. Okay, come on down to 24. All right, ready to read 24. God is a spirit. God is a what? Spirit. God is a what? Spirit. So we just got a biblical ne- definition of what God is. God is a spirit. You and I are made in the image and likeness of God. So if I had to say, what is God like? What is God like? Answer. He's a spirit. Then he says, watch this. Come on back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 14. Back over to the verse where we're Then he said, they that worship him must worship him how? Come on, say first spirit, then natural. See, there's really nothing natural about your worship experience. When you got out the car, came across, the, got on these grounds, you shifted into the spirit realm. When you came through one door, you went out of court. Now you're in the inner court. And the Holy of Holies is being unveiled to you. Ain't nobody in here. So everything about God starts out spirit. That's why I can conclusively say when God speaks to me, he speaks to me spirit to spirit. And it manifests in my natural man. What I do in secret, I'm all the way back to where I started. He rewards me. So being consistent where I started in my relationship with God will cause me somewhere in my future to have magnanimous manifestation. Oh, that's just too huge. Mega. Bigger than we can even think. Notice what the word says. I have not seen, you have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for him that love him. Yeah, so I'm trying constantly to develop my spirit. Yeah. And the more I develop my spirit, the more I yield to the things of God. The less time I spend in the spirit, the more physical Henry is going to manifest. So it's first spirit. Come on, first spirit. First spirit. Then natural. 1 Corinthians 14, back over at that verse. I want you to start reading again. Now we ought to be able to see it just a little bit more clear. Anybody getting anything this morning? Amen. You sure don't fool me now. Amen. All right, ready? Read. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the I'm going to pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding. And I'm going to pray with understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the Spirit. 
and I was seen with understanding. So don't let anybody fool you or try to talk you out of developing spiritually. Oh, I might as well do it. He just say, tell somebody, you need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> tell somebody else and say, you need the Holy Spirit. All right, watch this. Go to Jude. There ain't but one chapter. I want you down at the 20th verse. Y'all at the 20th verse? Jude, some of y'all waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. We got to use them Bibles more than on Sundays. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they give life. Amen. Jesus said, there's power in the word. See, the devil don't care nothing about your crying, feeling sorry for yourself. See, that's why when we start speaking that word in here like that, stuff starts happening. You can't see it happening, but I know it's happening. Angels start hitting cartwheels, man. They respond to the voice of God. Y'all got my scripture? Jude, I'm waiting on y'all. I don't know you that unless you say amen. amen. You got it? All right, look at that 20th verse. Ready to read that 20th verse. Uh, right, ready to read. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your How you going to do that? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. You so much need to develop in the Spirit. Till... Glory to God. It's certain things we won't ever get to manifest without spending time in the Spirit. Because when, ah, uh, Zechariah 4 and 6, hurry, hurry, man, y'all eating up all my time. We coming back to Genesis chapter 1, don't think I'm lost. Still talking about before the foundation of the world. All this Gerard was set up before the foundation of the world. See, because when you get saved, nothing about your physical body got saved. Your spirit was the part that got saved. That's why you hear the old saying, say, something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. The Holy Ghost on the inside, showing up on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Is by his spirit. Y'all got my scripture? Amen. All right, where well, I tell you to go? Four and six. All right, ready? Let's read it. Yes. Word of to Zerubbabel. Look at somebody and tell them, you need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All right, come on back over here to Genesis. Before, two things happened. Two things happened. You were chosen before the world even started to be in existence. See, I'm special. I'm not just talking about special Ed. I'm special. God saw fit long before Teresa and Henry even know they could produce another Henry Amen. to pick me. I just had to get to the place in my personal life that I knew that I needed a relationship with him. Genesis, come on, before the foundation of the word, verse two, verse two, ready, read. And what happened? And the of God moved the face of the Lord. Then something else. Said, now, long before God said, world come forth, he had already slain the lamb and he had already chosen you. Yeah. Now, I don't have a lot of time, but we got to come over into Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 1, 4. I might as well start at 1. No, start at verse 4 through verse 6. I don't want to take up too much time. 
See, the Bible said we, when you teach, when you teach, you got to go line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. See, I could just come here and give you a piece of a verse and, and hoop, holler, and sing, and let's go home. But I'm trying to get an impartation. I'm trying to get you to a place where you transition in life by the word of God. Anybody getting anything in here? You learning anything this morning? See, that's how you know you're in the right place. When you get there and you learn, you start growing, getting understanding and revelation. Okay, hold your finger there. Somebody just looked at me in the spirit real crazy. Let me show you. Watch, this was the apostles' prayer for the people. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. Oh, I'm in the book. Y'all got my scripture? Come on, we're running out of time. All right, ready, read it. Thanks from you, making mention of you in my prayers. Next verse, that the God of our Lord, in the knowledge of who? So now what type of anointing does God de desire for us to have? A spirit of wisdom and revelation where? To reveal means to uncover. Like George Wisely Carver, taking the cloak of ignorance off the man in the statue in the front of Tuskegee. That's right. God wants to peel the ignorance of the world back off our eyes so we can see in the spirit. Peel it back. Remember, Elisha sent his young preacher out to the court to get some water. Now the prophet already knew them folk was out there looking for him. So he sent him out there. He said, go on out there, boy, get your job started. Get your chores started. The boy gets outside and he sees that the whole castle, yeah, the prophet had a castle, that the whole castle was surrounded by his enemies. Uh -huh. He panicked. The spirit of fear got on that rascal. He ran in there and woke the old man up, said, hey, prophet, the camp is surrounded by the enemy. Old man act like wasn't a bother him. Old man said, boy, didn't I tell you to go out there and get that fire started and bring me some water up in here? He said, but prof, but prof, they got us surrounded. He said, go on and do what I told you. Why he was on his way. See, that's why it's important to have somebody that know how to pray, what to pray, praying for you. The prophet told him, told the Lord, say, open the boy's eyes so he could see. Now, he was seeing in the natural, baby. <laughs> but he couldn't see in the spirit. That's like a lot of folks sit in the church Sunday after Sunday. Y'all see naturally, but you really ain't seeing clear yet spiritually. So every day, every night, I'm praying for you. Lord, open their eyes. Because when the devil blinds us, the Bible says he blinds our mind's eyes. He tells him to open the boy's eyes. The boy went out there. Before he could get out there, the prophet said, boy, let me tell you something. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. Tell three or four folks, say, they that are with you are more than they that are with them. The boy goes back out there on the second time, Calvin. And when he look up, he can see a different way. How many of you start coming to Word of Life and now you're seeing a little different way? Yeah. <laughs> the boy went back outside, Baker opened his eyes and he saw a host of angels encamped around. Then the prophet started showing out, Calvin. What you mean? Yeah, he showed out. He get on up, put a little robe on. He come out there and say, hey, 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 hey. The man y'all looking for. I know where he is. Y'all follow my voice. Yeah. Now all of them blind on horses. They listening to the voice of the prophet. Come on, 
the prophet could lead you to your destiny or to your destruction. Oh, I'm working up in here today. He said, he say, close your eyes. Open your, come on, follow me. Listen, listen to my voice. He walked them all right down into the camp of the enemy. Then told the Lord, say, open their eyes. Let them see. Then the ones that thought they had him surrounded, they found out that the Lord had them surrounded. All because the boy got to a place where he started walking in consciousness and revelation. Tell somebody, say, you need the Holy Spirit because God desires that you walk in revelation. How come you think he says when you pray? We're just here talking about the priesthood of Jesus. Jesus oversees our prayer life. Yeah. He will show you great and wondrous things that you didn't even know. If I don't spend time with him, come on. how are you going to show me what come I don't on, know? Doc. You're not trying to talk to anyone who's not trying to talk to you. And then why should I share my secrets with you when you don't have my heart? Y'all young folks seeking to get married, better make sure y'all got each other's heart. That's right. That's right. No sense of getting married and we don't have each other's. I ain't too much interested in what's in your pocket because that could change. That's right. That's right. I need to know you with me when it don't even feel like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. That's Amen. Amen. Come on down. Before the foundation of the world. Number three. His priesthood is superior. Number one was we were chosen before the foundation of the world. Number two, Jesus was slain before the foundation. This is stuff that cannot be undone. God loved you so much till he did that. He secured that for you. Number three, though, he, Jesus is our high priest, and his, he is superior. Hebrews chapter one, let's look at these first four verses, and I might be able to get uh, uh, verse four through six. Yeah, let me do it like that. Verse four through verse six. We might be able to close in a minute. Y'all don't keep me here too long. Quit all that pulling. Come to Bible study. That's why you'd be so homegrown Sunday. Get up here. I can't even go nowhere. When I leave church, I go somewhere and lay down. Y'all don't pull on me so much. <laughs> hey Amen. I'll be wanting to go and see what's going on. I can't even go ride on them. Better get somewhere and lay down, boy. It used to be when I was younger, though, I could just go, beep. Now I'm slowing down. <laughs> Got to get somewhere and rest up, y'all. See, I'm sweating. I don't even normally do this. Somebody pull it. See, Jesus said, see, when you walk in the spirit like this, Jesus said when he got out there in that crowd, somebody touched him. The Bible records it like this. He perceived virtue had gone out of his body. Many people don't know when somebody's ministering to you like this, virtue is going out of their body. Somebody who's really in tune and locked in to receive it, you, you, it's like you pulling on a battery right now. I told you, see, I got drunk up here. Where I told y'all to go? Hebrews 1, 4 through 6, because I'm, I'm right here where I want to be right now. Glory to God. Say, Jesus Christ is God Almighty manifested in the flesh. All right, ready? Let's read verse 4. Ready, read. So stop. That means he cannot be Michael. Michael is an angel. He cannot be Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a high priest. He was a man like me. He, he, he can't be one of the prophets because he's been made so much better than the angels. Keep reading. All right, stop. Inheritance. How many of you know and understand? Write this down. We are his inheritance. 
The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, 13, verse around there somewhere, he says, Christ have redeemed us. The word redeemed in the Hebrew or the Greek means to be bought out. A ransom was paid. First John, the first chapter, uh, around the second, third verse, talks about how he is the perpetuation for our sins. Not only our sins, perpetuation is high price. But for the sins of the whole world, there was enough, there's enough power in the blood of Jesus to save Jermaine folks that ain't even been born yet. That's how much power to purge and to cleanse was in his blood. Keep reading. Thou art my beloved son. Keep reading. So now how can he be an angel then God told the angels to worship him? Now let me help you with your scripture right here. Do you remember when the, when, 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 when the angels and the shepherds came to his birth? The Bible said all the angels in the heavenly host worshiped him. That's that scripture being fulfilled right there. Keep reading. Come on. And of the angels he said. Keep reading. All right, so that means that his priesthood, his throne, his seat, where he sits is forever and ever. It's eternal. As I said last week, in, in, in the church the, the, where we come to worship, at some point in time, I won't be able to be the pastor because I'm a human being, and even though I have eternal life that speaks spiritually, this flesh man going to have to leave y'all. Somewhere way, 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 way. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. But I'm just being real with you. I ain't going to be here always. And y'all going to have to get somebody else to oversee this job. So while the earthly priest that was covering you is past, you have a heavenly priest. Stand up right here for me, brother. Stand up right here. You have a heavenly priest face to people. Priest. Now, Joe, I want you to stand right here. When I call you, come now, all right? Stand right there. You have a heavenly priest. Jesus is the great high priest. He oversees all the priests. Now, watch. I'm going to help you with something. You got a church, too. Your house is your first ministry. You the pastor there. Male, female, indifferent. But when you come here... There is another priest that helps you oversee your priestly functions at your home. When this one has to pass, we got one that don't never pass, who's eternal in the heaven, who oversees this transition from going from the one that passed, have a seat. Come on, Joe. To the, have a seat. To the one that now must take the position. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? So that means you are never uncovered. Thank you. Because his priesthood is eternal. Now, real fast, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. Got nine minutes on the clock. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. Write this one down. His priesthood was established by God. His priesthood was established by God Almighty. Didn't no man put him in office. God did it. When we get to Hebrews chapter 5, I want you to start reading at verse 1. Ready? Read. See, that's why you got to have covering. That's why you got to be a part of a local church because every, every, every gift ought to be flowing out the church. There ain't no real such thing like talking about your ministry. Read that verse again for me. Read it, read it. Speaking 
So in other words, I got to license you as a deacon, a deaconess, a minister, an elder, a bishop. Yeah. Because someone has to spiritually speak, has to be spiritually responsible for you. So then he says, everyone to take it from among you. That's why your brother, even though he used to be one of the roughest jokers you ever know, it, it, crazy in a row, lizard, God could call him to be the preacher. That's right. Read the next verse, watch. Ready to read. And sacrifices for sins for... All right, now, see, because I know what it's like to struggle with stuff, I can now be compassionate and not judgmental. See, the grace of God on my life should cause me to be compassionate. See, when God moves in our, on our behalf, it's because of compassion. Compassion, another word in Greek, means love. So his love motivates him to move for So I can I, I not feel sorry for you, but I can have compassion on you because I see you in the place you are because the Bible says such were some of us. And we still coming out of stuff. That's right. That's right. See, you ain't going to be perfect till he come. Newsflash. Bible says when he comes, then we shall be like him. So up into that, we still just developing. The only perfect man. That's why Jesus had to come, because couldn't none of us keep the covenant. Hey, I, 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 I don't want to die for myself, let alone somebody else. You, you know, you, you don't know until you face with that kind of decision. You know how folks say, I die for my wife, I die for my children. Praise God, forbid that ever happen, because I don't want to have to make that choice. Because I be talking about, well, somebody got to stay here to take care of stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my grandma, my grandma be talking about somebody need a kidney. Well, what if I get mine away, then I ain't going to have none. But you got to be confronted with that kind of situation. Well, you understand what I'm saying? To see, to see how far your compassion will move you. Yeah, yeah. But y'all, church three people say, Pastor, just keeping it real. Keep it real. Dude. I ain't trying to run out here in no shootout with y'all. I get shot, you still alive. They be saying, oh man, he, he went down for the call, man. He, he died like a gangster, cuz. That joke, that'll quit gangster and everything now because he got away. You, you carried by tw 10 or 12, whatever it is. <laughs> Mary Hart do a good like a medicine. All right, here we go. Well, we, come on, we got to finish. Now I got five minutes. Y'all keep all that stuff going. Read it, read. Who can have compassion, compassion on, on the ignorant? And on them that are out of the way. Out of the way. See, before you were called Christians, you were called of the way or uh, disciples. Because we, we had left traditional religion. Just like some of y'all, you came out of traditional churches, a traditional background, come to an interdenominational, non-denominational church, whatever they want to call it. But it's not traditional. So, so that everybody that's out of the way is simply talking about people who are not Christians. Yeah, because we were of the way. Because they couldn't define us. It wasn't until, like, I believe, like chapter 21, when they call us Christians. Yeah. Bible says at the church of Antioch, when they start saying, these people act like Christ. But at first, they were the way. Because you got to remember, the religious sector that day was cutting it off, coming against it, coming against it. They came against Jesus. Because Jesus was coming to set the people free from religion. All right, come on, let's read. We got to go. For that he himself, with infirmity, of, and infirmity is a weakness in your flesh. So he said, now your priest, like me, I, I, I know what it feels like to be weak in the flesh. Right. Trying to stop drinking, still want to drink. Trying to stop smoking, still want to smoke. Yeah. Or whatever it is you do. If it ain't that, it's something. Yeah. Crawling in somebody wanting to crawl tonight, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you be wanting to stop doing, you getting trying to... All right, while y'all looking at me trying to play me all off, at least I was, I was honest about mine. <laughs> See, what you got to realize, you can't trust your flesh five seconds. 
that flesh love the world and the things of the world. It love to do worldly stuff. And then if you ever mess around and turn it loose, oh Lord, it's hard to get it back. I mean, when you just get your flesh, just get loose. If you just do whatever you want to do, you think you're bigger. Man, it's hard to bring that thing back down up under subjection. Come on, keep reading. We got to go. And by reason there, there, keep on. Keep on. Keep on. See, that's why folk run to the pool pit, scare me. Because a lot of sacrifice go with this. You got to, I mean, a lot, a lot of folk judging you all the time. You live in a glass house. You can't, you make a mistake and stuff your toe. They're going to want to crucify you. Come on up in here. So it, it scare me if a joker be trying to run, talking like he can just get a job. Man, you better come on. You better think about what you're doing. You better think about the intensity of the level of commitment you're about to make. All right, keep reading. We're going somewhere. Uh huh. Was was Aaron? Keep reading. Keep reading. Keep reading. Now Melchizedekian priesthood, look up. It precedes the Levitical priesthood. In other words, long before there was a Levite tribe, there was a man called Melchizedek. Abraham and them had gone out to war, and Melchizedek just shows up. Read that Genesis chapter 14. We don't have time today, but just mark it. Genesis chapter 14 in your notes. That's where you're going to first be introduced to Melchizedek. That's before Abraham really started following God good. So that means the nation of Israel had not yet been developed because they were still in the loins of Abraham. Oh, I'm teaching up in here. So when he said his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek, it's a priesthood of God. Yeah. It was not a priesthood of man. Continue to read. Come on, read. Who in the days of his flesh? Who in the days of his flesh? Now, they, they, okay, remember that. Watch God. Man, that's what I love about the Holy Spirit. Remember we went and we saw that. What was God like? What is God? What is God? Now we see right here where the scripture is showing us how God came from a spirit to in the days of his flesh. Stay with the Bible now. Keep reading. Ready to read? Uh huh. Keep reading. Keep reading. By the things that he suffered. Now, how many of you know right there he's not talking about suffer like sickness, lack, and disease. He's talking about he learned obedience through the things that he went through. In particularly, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and his flesh man tried to rise up and take over his spirit man. And for the second time, he gets to the place and he says, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Keep reading. And being made. Keep reading. Yes, sir. Come on, you got so many folk want to get up and minister to people and don't walk in the full revelation. He says some of y'all desiring to be teachers when you still need to be taught. What verse y'all on? Let me finish it for you. Wow, y'all went away with, okay, verse chapter five. Okay, for whom, I'm at verse 11, for whom we have many things to say and heard to be uttered, saying, ye are dull of hearing. For when ye, for, <laughs> for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. In other words, God says, I'm expecting something of you. I need you to mature and rise up. Time for you to get out here and help other folk. He said, no, but that's not happening because you were dull of hearing. In other words, your spiritual hearing was off. 
And if your spiritual hearing is off, you're not going to be able to convey, convey, excuse me, spiritual truths the way they need to be disseminated. Watch. He says, for when you are, for in the time you ought to be teachers, you have need to one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not. Remember I told you the Bible said desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow by thereby. But meat, the Bible says, is for them that are full age. Meat is the revelation of the word. So he said, now sometimes we got to go back and teach you the basics of your salvation so that then we can take you forward in a place of revelation as you mature. And the Holy Spirit literally starts ministering to you spirit to spirit Almost like God sitting in your living room or in your car while you riding, talking to you. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But strong meat, stuff we've been teaching here today, but strong meat, but long, in other words, you don't feed a baby steak. He doesn't have teeth to chew. He can't digest it properly. You got to mush it up for the baby. He still needs the nutrients and the proteins, but he can't eat it like you and I. But once you start developing teeth, you ought to be able to chew on this word. Doesn't that sound like man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Look at three people say, you need to be chewing on this word. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We're going to pick up right here next week. Jesus, our great high priest. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a hand clap of praise. You know, you got to stop somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, come on, praise him if you got something. Woo! I ain't mean to go that long. <laughs> Hallelujah. Raise your hand. Let's make this confession. Say, Father, I thank you that no one but Jesus Christ sits on the throne of my life. And I thank you that Jesus is the great high priest of my profession. I thank you that no one but Jesus sits on the throne of my life and I do not hear the voice of the stranger, but I hear the voice of the good shepherd and your voice only do I obey. I thank you for giving me an acceptable sacrifice that while I was yet in my sin, you sent Jesus to die on my behalf. I am the redeemed. You are my redeemer, and I have said so. Come on, praise the Lord.